What's going on y'all? Riley here and today we're going to be talking about Junji Ito, so stay tuned. So like I said, we're talking about Junji Ito today. Um, in making this video, my main goal was to put together a comprehensive reading and collecting list of all of Ito's work that's available in English. Now, on top of just showing these books and telling you what's out there, I did a little bit more work as far as research goes. Um, research meaning I did a little bit of Googling on stuff um, to find out what has not yet been published in English. I think I have a comprehensive list of all of the short stories and all the other material of his that hasn't yet made it overseas. Um, if I'm missing a couple things, feel free to point it out down below in the comments after you watch this video. Uh, but in the meantime, let's go ahead and start getting into this. Uh, so first, just to cover a little bit about Ito himself, Junji Ito is one of the most well-known and most prolific manga creators in the world. He's definitely one of the most celebrated and well-known horror manga creators. In the past several years, he's become a lot more uh, recognizable in the West. We've seen his work uh, kind of get expanded a lot more out here than it was several years ago, with Biz Media putting out hardcover collections every year and now kind of increasing their output uh, to it, put out more than one every year. Uh, his his style's very recognizable and it's something that is just kind of synonymous with the idea of horror and manga. Uh, my favorite thing about him though is how cheery his disposition is, even though he has some of the more disturbing imagery in his manga. Um, it's always fun to see that juxtaposition between the creator and their creation. Now, while Ito has been working in manga for decades in Japan, it wasn't until 2001 that we had some collections come out in English. In 2001, a now defunct publisher called Comics One published the first three volumes of the Junji Ito Horror Collection. The first two volumes of the Horror Collection were a collection of stories for the character of his named Tomie. And I'll talk about Tomie in a little bit in this video. The third volume, though, was something that, as of now, we still haven't seen reprinted in English from any publisher, and that was the third volume of the horror collection titled Flesh Colored Horror. As well, in 2001, Viz Media started publishing their three-volume edition of the series Uzumaki. Uzumaki is one of Ito's most well-known stories, uh, and one of his longer-form stories as well, and is definitely my favorite of all of his works. We'll talk about that one in a little bit whenever I start showing the hardcovers, though. Very soon after that, in 2003, Viz then followed up the releases of Uzumaki with a two-volume release of another well-known series of Ito's called Gyo. Gyo also got a hardcover release, so we'll take a look at that in a few minutes here. Uh, but this is another one of his more well-known titles, and it's another one of his longer-form stories, as opposed to the majority of his content, which is a bunch of short horror stories. Moving forward, in 2006 was when we saw Dark Horse kind of take over from what Comics One was doing and start publishing these uh, those anthology type volumes. The first two again being collections of all the Tomie content, and then the third one being something titled Long Hair in the Attic. Now this third volume is another short story collection which does double dip, I think, at least once or twice with the material in the Flesh Colored Horror volume that Comics One published a few years prior, but mostly this is material that was not published in English before this, and it still has not been republished to this day. I wanted to highlight those two books, Flesh Colored Horror and Long Hair in the Attic, because with all the material that Viz Media has been publishing in the last several years, these stories have not been republished and these collections are extremely out of print. So if you're a completionist and want to have everything that's been released by Ito in English, these are two books that you might have a little bit of trouble finding, at least for a decent price, as they tend to go for, I've seen several hundreds of dollars on eBay and on Amazon. Now this brings us up to 2009, and this is kind of the beginning of where we start to see a lot more of Ito's works being published in English. And while most of them are actually by Viz, a couple of these books were published by other publishers. We have one from Kadansha, and then we have one from Vertical. Now what I'm going to be doing is showing these books at a 
first person point of view, um, just to give you an idea of what these things look like because they're really beautiful collections that Viz has been putting together. I'm gonna give a little bit of detail on the interiors, on the artwork, and then on all of these short story collections, give you guys the glossary on each book showing what short stories are collected. We're gonna run through these in chronological order of the order that they were released. I'll give a little bit of description though of some of these books as we look at them. In 2009, Kadansha would release this volume, Junji Ito's Cat Diary, Yan and Mu. Now this is something that's a little bit different from most of the output that we have from him and definitely different from the material that we had from him prior to the release of this volume in that it's really not so much of a horror story as it is, just as the title presents, a diary of the different experiences that Ito has with his two pet cats. But throughout these stories, he does utilize his signature style of art to kind of create this uh, suspenseful and sometimes terrifying aura around the cats. It's definitely played to be more comedic, and we're supposed to find these stories funny in how he presents his cats to be these scary animals when he's really just showing us everyday things that any cat owner probably has happen. Now, a few more years would pass, and in 2013, Viz Media would start their trend of releasing a lot of his content in these really nice hardcover volumes. And this started with, as we see here, Uzumaki. Now, Uzumaki, I mentioned before, was a longer form story. It was originally three volumes long, and all three are collected in this nice, thick hardcover edition. And for a first hardcover release and the beginning of what would become kind of a staple of their premium format releases, this was a really great output from Viz Media. Now this does collect the entire story, like I said, and this is on oversized pages, so it is larger than the previous three volume edition, and we get some great colored artwork in there. The table of contents is gonna show that it has all 20 chapters of the series. And it just looks beautiful. Now I mentioned that this is my personal favorite Junji Ito's story. This is just a terrifying tale of a city and its people who are overtaken by spirals, hence the title Uzumaki. And it starts out with these spirals being present uh, in things that are seemingly normal. Uh, you see like a snail shell here. But as the story goes on, they become more and more present in places that they really shouldn't exist. And it winds up becoming something that's rather terrifying and very haunting in a lot of ways. And I don't want to spoil much of that, but needless to say, I highly recommend this one if you're someone who's either into Ito but never read this, or maybe you are new to Ito's work, this is a really great place to start to see what I think is some of the best quality work that he has produced in his time. The next hardcover that Viz put out was this all-in-one edition of Gyo. Gyo, as I mentioned, was originally two volumes long, so this collects both of them in this one nice hardcover edition, not nearly as thick as Uzumaki, obviously. Um, and this one is another tale that I really enjoy, but it's definitely more on the comedic side than it is on the horrific side, like something like uh, Uzumaki is, which is great and makes it a really good book to pick up for anyone who wants to kind of get exposed to Ito and his work, because this gives you an idea of not just his sense of horror, but his sense of humor, as he uses a lot of very uh, humorous kind of ideas, things that, while they're scary in a lot of ways, you can't help but to laugh at them and to think that they're kind of silly at the same time. Which, honestly, I love, because I love the idea of, you know, horror movies similar to, if we look at Sam Raimi, who definitely infuses a lot of uh, comedy in his storytelling. Now, Uzumaki tells a story of these uh, biological parasites that attach themselves to dead uh, animals, dead fish, as you can see here, and then use the uh, kind of byproduct, the gas that is made from the dead bodies of these fish and the animals and stuff that they attach to, to power them. And uh, then they go walking around on Earth and 
wind up wreaking a lot of havoc. It, it's a silly horror story, but it's one that I really enjoy. Uh, one that I think is works really well on multiple levels. And again, if you're not too familiar with Junji Ito, this is another great one to pick up. There's a reason why this is one of the earliest works that was published in English. The next offering that we had from Viz Media was the first of many anthology volumes, and that was Fragments of Horror. Now, this is what I mean by anthology is that it, it does collect a lot of short stories from the creator instead of being a long form singular story. And this is also one of the few that has a dust jacket as well. Most of them, like the previous two books, do not have dust jackets to their hardcovers. So let's take a look at what stories are collected in here. We have Futon, Wooden Spirit, Tomio Red Turtleneck, Gentle Goodbye, Dissection Chan, Blackbird, Megami Nanakse, Whispering Woman, and then there's an afterword in here. So a lot of fun short stories collected in this volume. This was, like I said, the first of these anthologies that Viz Media had put out, as previously their output had only been Uzumaki and Gyo, his longer form stories. This volume sold well enough that not only had it gone back to print multiple times, but this really was a lot of what inspires Viz to start releasing these hardcover anthology releases that I'm going to be showing in a second. Following Fragments of Horror, we got the hardcover release of Tomie. Now, I mentioned earlier that both Comics 1 and Dark Horse had their paperback releases of Tomie back in the earlier 2000s. Viz Media came out and released this all-in-one edition, and it is a huge hardcover volume that collects all of the Tomie stories. Tomie is his most popular character in that she's been adapted in Japan into a series of multiple films. Basically, the idea is that Tomie is a beautiful young woman, and no matter what happens to her, she always comes back. That's why it says, no use escaping Tomie. That's the tagline here, because the people that she haunts cannot get away from her. Now, this is one that absolutely scared the pants off of me. Uh, I was reading it in the dark, alone, in a cabin in the woods, and that was probably the worst idea I've ever had in my life. That's just a little bit hyperbolic, but not really. And you can see by the table of contents here that there is a ton of content. There are, it should be every Tomie story that has been published collected in this one single hardcover that has over 750 pages worth of material. So it's quite a bit of content in here and a lot of really great stories with fantastic examples of Junji Ito's creative and horrific artwork. Now the next item that we see published is actually not from Viz, but this one came out from Vertical Comics. And Vertical is actually part of Kadansha at this point. And this is The Dissolving Classroom. These short stories, this uh, small paperback collection of short stories, all focus on these two characters, siblings, um, who basically have these horror stories about things that happen with them, in their life, at their school, and all this stuff. A lot of pretty uh, disturbing little stories about these people. You can see some really beautiful artwork right here. This is a fun little collection, not my absolute favorite, but definitely something that if you are a fan of Junji Ito, without a doubt, you owe it to yourself to purchase this book. Now, going back to Viz Media, we start getting these hardcover anthology collections, and several of them are labeled with this Junji Ito Selected Stories. Now, these are not one-for-one -one collections based on anything that's been released in Japan. Selected stories, meaning that they've chosen these particular stories to be compiled into these hardcover editions for the English release. They are hardcovers the same size as the ones that I just shown for Gyo, Uzumaki, or Tomie. However, they don't have the same style of trade dress. Um, the selected stories all have this kind of branding at the top, the Junji Ito selected stories, and then they all have a different color uh, as the primary color on the hardcover and on the spine and all that stuff. Now, taking a look inside of this one, there are, each of these, they are anthology volumes, like I've been saying, so the contents range from being great to good, and some of them just don't really hit. But as far as what stories are here, we have Used Record, Shiver, Fashion Model, which is 
uh, one of the, I think, most well-known uh, stories because it features a terrifying character that appears in several um, of Junji Ito's short stories. Hanging Blimp, Marionette Mansion, Painter, The Long Dream, Honored Ancestors, Greased, which is another really well-known one, and then the previously unpublished new story, Fashion Model Cursed Frame, plus an afterword. So there's about 400 pages of material in here, and a lot of really fantastic stories in this hardcover collection. Following up on Shiver, we got another Junji Ito story collection called Frankenstein. And this one, of course, is titled as Frankenstein because the main feature in this book is the fact that it does have Ito's uh, own interpretation of the classic Mary Shelley novel of Frankenstein. See on the back, Junji Ito meets Mary Shelley. So cracking into this hardcover, we can see the table of contents and what stories are included. And that includes Frankenstein, which is almost 200 pages long, followed by Neck Spectre, Bog of Living Spirits, Pen Pal, Intruder, The Strange Tale of Oshikiri, The Strange Tale of Oshikiri, The Walls, The Hell of the Doll Funeral, Face Firmly in Place, Boss Nan Nan, and then Hide and Seek with Boss Nan Nan, totaling for another 400 page book. And after Frankenstein, we got another one of these Junji Ito story collections in Smashed. Again, these are selected stories of Itos that have been compiled into a volume of about 400 pages. And we'll go ahead and take a look on the inside to see exactly what contents are in Smashed. So I can tell you what short stories are here. We've got Blood Sucking Darkness, Ghosts of Primetime, Roar, Earthbound, Death Row Doorbell, The Mystery of the Haunted House, The Mystery of the Haunted House, Soichi's version, Soichi's Beloved Pet, In Mirror Valley, I Don't Want to Be a Ghost, Library Vision, Splendid Shadow Song, and Smashed for another 400 or so page collection filled with great Junji Ito artwork. And that's the best part about these is just seeing his creativity come through in these stories, these terrifying and often just very fun and funny short horror stories. Now the next release from Viz was something that was definitely very different. We got Junji Ito's adaptation of No Longer Human. Now this is also one of his more recent releases in Japan, so we got it pretty soon after it was released in Japan. This is an adaptation of the classic novel by Osamu Dazai. Now it's not so much a horror story in the same vein as all of the other material that we're used to from Ito. And this is a pretty nice thick volume, but it is a slightly smaller trim. So it's a little shorter than the other hardcovers that we've been looking at. And this one also does have a dust jacket, which shows some pretty nice cover art underneath. But it is a more grounded story um, about our, I don't want to say protagonist, because he's not a very positive main character, but about our main character and his life and all of the things that he's done in his life leading through childhood, through old age, and leading up to the final days and years and whatnot of his life. We get more beautiful artwork from Ito across this volume, um, but this is a lot more grounded in a lot of ways than what we've seen in his other stories and in his short stories. So this is something that is definitely different than what you might come to expect from him, but it's a beautiful rendition of this story. And I highly do recommend picking this up, whether you're a fan of Ito or not. This is a fantastic book, uh, very dark, very emotional, definitely not for the light of heart, but I highly recommend this book. Moving forth, the next book released by Viz was Venus in the Blind Spot. And this one's a little bit different because it is a best of collection. This actually was released in Japan. Um, and this was Junji Ito picking his favorite stories of, him, of his own work, basically. Um, so there are some stories in here that have never been published in English before, but there are some stories in here that have been published before in English. There's several nice colored pages, if I could get the pages to turn here. A little pull-out image as well. And then we see here is a color gallery, so this is telling about those pictures that we just had. The uh, poster, Kyrie Women of No Longer Human. 
uh, Frankenstein and Innsmouth Uzumaki, No Longer Human Volume 1 cover, Volume 2 cover, and Volume 3 cover. And then turning the page, we then see the story contents. Uh, we have Billions Alone, The Human Chair, An Unearthly Love, Venus in the Blind Spot, The Licking Woman, Master Umez and Me, How Love Came to Professor Kirita, The Enigma of Amigara Fault, and then The Sad Tale of the Principal Post and Keepsake. So Umez and Me is a story about the classic horror manga creator Kazuo Umez. And Kazuo Umez, probably his most well-known work is Drifting Classroom. Um, this story basically gives a little bit of information about how Ito himself was inspired by Umez. Um, and then the other notable stories, just to mention, Enigma of Amigara Fault and Sad Tale of Principal Post are both in the Gyo hardcover as well. Those uh, stories are always presented alongside Gyo, basically. Um, this is actually an image from Amigara Fault. Amigara Fault is a classic story and one that's actually very well known. It's actually the first Junji Ito material that I ever read. Uh, I learned about it because of uh, different jokes and stuff that I had seen online. And I was familiar with his work, but had never actually read anything of him. And it made me want to seek out his, his content. And it was just such a great and haunting short story that has stayed with me for... God, it's definitely been close to 15 years since I read that story, but I absolutely love it and highly recommend it. If you aren't looking to pick up Gyo, at the very least pick up Venus in the Blind Spot because any horror fan, any fan of horror manga in general, whether you are a, a fan of Ito or not, needs to have Amagara Fault. And this brings us to Remina, which is the most recent release that we've had in English. Another hardcover. This one is a single story told in these pages. It is a kind of sci-fi horror story about a young lady. Um, it's a very interesting story. Not my favorite of his, but as always, there's a lot of really fantastic and creative artwork that appears throughout the book. If you're a fan of Ito already, then you'll definitely want to pick this one up to add to your collection, but it's not something that I would recommend as kind of the first Ito story for someone to read. There are definitely better things than this one for that. All right, so that brings us up to date with what's out in the US, but Viz Media has already solicited three upcoming hardcover collections. And I'm going to go ahead and read the descriptions of those from their solicitations uh, to give you an idea of what those collections are gonna be. I'll put an image up of each one uh, up next to my face, up on the video when I'm editing. And then I'll, I'll kind of give the information about what these volumes are gonna be in comparison to the stuff that has not been released in English just yet. So the first of the upcoming books is actually due out on April 20th, is the current release date, and this is Love Sickness Junji Ito Story Collection. Now this is a story collection, as the title suggests, which means it is going to have a lot of short stories in it, but I believe that the first half of this 400-page volume is going to be a direct uh, adaptation or a direct translation of the Junji Ito uh, Horror Collection Volume 15, titled The Lovesick Dead. And this was made up of five chapters, The Intersection Bishonen, The uh, Troubled Woman, Shadow, Night of Screams, and White Clothed Pretty Boy. Uh, so I believe that those five chapters are going to be present in this volume. But as well, in the description, it does state uh, that there are 10 stories. So that means there's going to be five additional short stories making up the latter 200 pages worth of material. And it says that that includes the strange Hikizuri siblings and the rib woman. The rest of the solicitation information reads, an innocent love becomes a bloody hell in another superb collection by master of horror Junji Ito. Ryusuke returns to the town he once lived in because rumors are swirling about girls killing themselves after encountering a bewitchingly handsome young man. Harboring his own secret from time spent in this town, Ryusuke attempts to capture the beautiful boy and close the case. But... And then that's it. Just talks about the other stories that are collected in here. So anyway, um, that's the first of the three collections that we have. So like I said, it'll have the material from Lovesick Dead plus five additional short stories. Now, after this, in August of this year, we are supposed to get a story, Censor. And Censor is 
Similar to Remina, this is a single story that's going to be collected in one 200-page hardcover. Uh, the description here, it's a horror sci-fi type series. Horror master Junji Ito explores a new frontier with a grand cosmic horror tale in which a mysterious woman has her way with the world. Did she wander in or was she drawn in? A woman walks alone at the foot of Mount Sengoku. A man appears saying he's been waiting for her and invites her to a nearby village. Surprisingly, the village is covered in hair-like volcanic glass fibers and all of it shines a bright gold. At night, when the villagers perform their custom of gazing up at the starry sky, countless unidentified flying objects come raining down on them, the opening act for the terror about to occur. And then finally, in December, we have one more collection due out, and this is titled Deserter. This is the most recent one that was announced about a month ago. And this is saying that it collects 12 of his earliest stories. So we don't know exactly which stories those are going to be, but suffice to say, I'd believe that it would be 12 stories not collected anywhere else prior to this. The description reads, an ever-increasing malice, mind-numbing terror. The seeds of horror are sown in this collection of Junji Ito's earliest works. A vengeful family hides an army deserter for eight years after the end of World War II, cocooning him in a false reality where the war never ended. A pair of girls look alike, but they aren't twins and a boy's nightmare threatens to spill out into the real world. This hauntingly strange story collection showcases a dozen of Junji Ito's earliest works from when he burst onto the horror scene sowing fresh seeds of terror. So those are the three collections that we know are coming. Uh, like I said, we don't know exactly what stories are going to be in Lovesickness and what stories are going to make up uh, that last volume either, but I do have a list of all of the different stories that I believe it's a complete list, if there's anything that I've missed or there's anything that I mention here that is collected in something that maybe it just got a different title, please let me know in the comments down below. But I, I think I got this pretty comprehensively down. But this is a list of all the material that has not yet been released in English. Now, I'm going to go through this and read some of it. I'll try and put some information up on the screen so you guys can read these things instead of just listening to me drone on and talk about it for a while. Um, but I will say that I, I have not read these stories, so I don't know a lot about any of the plots or anything, but this is just a lot of material that has not been released in English editions yet. Starting off, I have a list of specials and one-shots. We have Demon's Voice, Fixed Face, Layers of Fear, Mountain of Gods, Precipice of the Unknown, She is a Slow Walker, Snow White, Ghost Heights Management Association, and The Summer Graduation Trip. After this, there's some material from uh, two different collections of short stories. I believe some material has been adapted from either of those, so I've only left in the material, um, if there was, I've only left the material that has not been adapted into English. First of which is Mimi's Ghost Stories. We have the stories The Woman Next Door, The Sound of Grass, Grave Man, The Seashore, Just the Two of Us, and Scarlet Circle. And then the other collection is Black Paradox, which has the stories Group Suicide, Strange Tale of the Pylorus, Paradoxical Night, Dr. Suka's Village, The Spirit World Project, To the Dazzling Future, and Mystery Pavilion. Now, next up on my list here is the longest of Junji Ito's works. This is actually collected across six total volumes, and this is the series Rasputin the Patriot. Uh, the series has been adapted into other languages and stuff, like I said, six different volumes, but I'm hoping at some point that Viz Media decides to release two or three hardcover editions collecting this entire series because that would be fantastic, and it does sound like a really interesting story as well. The description here is Grigory Rasputin, the Mad Monk, gained his fame in the early 20th century by saving many people through healings and exorcisms, but then many Russians claim Rasputin is the worst traitor in all of history. This is the story of a simple analyst, Yuki Mamoru, who has become the Rasputin of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and also public enemy number one. Yukoku no Rasputin, Kafka-esque autobiography of a diplomat comparing himself to Rasputin as he gets swept up in a political crackdown in the early 2000s, a legal thriller with a geopolitical dash. Note, this book, despite its title, is not a chronicle of the life of Grigory Rasputin. Now, the next chunk is a bunch of short stories that were from the different volumes of the Junji Ito horror comic collection. I mentioned back at the beginning of the video that the first three of these were uh, published in English by the now defunct publisher Comics One. Uh, and then also some of this material was published by Dark Horse later on. The 
uh, first two volumes were collected by both Comics 1 and Dark Horse, and then again as uh, the Tomie hardcover by Viz. So skipping past that stuff, and again, I'm only talking about the stories that are in these volumes that have not been collected in English. So I've cut out anything that has been collected in English by Viz, but I've left in the material that has been collected by Comics 1 or Dark Horse since those books are so hard to find. Now reading through these, starting with the material from Volume 3, which is the flesh-colored horror, all of which was released by Comics 1, and one story of which appeared in the Dark Horse collection, Long Hair in the Attic, which is the first story, Long Hair in the Attic. Uh, the rest of the stories we have here, Permission, Beehive, Dying Young, Headless Statues, and Flesh-Colored Horror. Volume 4, again, features one story from the Dark Horse collection, Long Hair in the Attic, uh, that is The Face Burglar, and then as well there are the stories Scarecrows, Falling, and The Red String. And again, keep in mind, I'm not listing any stories that are already available in English from Viz. Next, Volumes 5 and 6 are a lot of stories with the character Soichi, which a few of his stories are collected in English already, but he is obviously a recurring character in Junji Ito's stories, and I would really love it if Viz would put together a Soichi collection, maybe similar to the Tomie collection, though Soichi is a much more comedic character than Tomie is, um, and his stories are always really fun to read because they're creepy, but they're also very funny in a lot of ways. Uh, so those stories in Volumes 5 and 6 are Fun Summer Vacation, Fun Winter Vacation, Soichi's Diary of Delight, Soichi's Home Tutor, Mannequin Teacher, Soichi's Birthday, Soichi's Selfish Curse, The Silent Room, Coffin, and Rumors. Then we move forward into Volume 7, where we have the stories Slug Girl, The Thing That Drifted Ashore, Mold, Ryokan, The Dr Groaning Drain, and Biohouse, the latter of which was released in the uh, Dark Horse Long Hair in the Attic collection. Volume 8, we have the stories Blood Bubble Bu Bushes, uh, there's Blood Bubble Bushes, Unbearable Labyrinth, and Sword of the Reanimator, both of which are in Long Hair in the Attic from Dark Horse, The Will, the Bridge, Demonology, which was also collected in Long Hair in the Attic, and The Conversation Room. Then moving on to Volume 10, because all of Volume 9 is already collected in English, we have Ice Cream Bus, Clubhouse, Smoking Club, Secondhand Record, The Sleeping Room, which is also in Long Hair in the Attic, and The Gift Bearer. That was uh, titled House of the Marionettes. That's Volume 10. Volume 11, The Town Without Streets. Collected here, but not collected in English, are The Town Without Streets, Near Miss, Map Town, Village of the Siren, which is in Long Hair in the Attic, and The Supernatural Transfer Student. Volume 12, The Bully collects four stories that are in Long Hair in the Attic. The Bully, House of the Deserter, Heart of the Father, and Love is Scripted, and then also collects the stories Memory, The Back Alley, and In the Soil. Volume 13 has The Circus Is Here, uh, that's the title of this volume, as well as Gravetown, The Window Next Door, and The Second Daughter's Lover, and Seance. Then we go to volume 14, The Story of the Mysterious Tunnel, which has the story of the Mysterious Tunnel, the Bronze Statue, Drifting Spores, and Blood Sickness of the White Sands Village. Volume 15 was Love Sick Dead, which we are getting entirely in the Love Sickness hardcover that's coming out soon. And then volume 16 was Frankenstein, most of which was collected in the Frankenstein hardcover, except for one story called A Crap to Remember, uh, which is more of a funny story, obviously, according to the title. That is, I believe it was about Junji Ito remembering uh, something from his childhood. So that's everything that I have. Again, if I've missed anything, please comment down below with any stories that I may have missed, or any stories that I may have listed that maybe appeared in an English volume with a different translation, because that does happen and has happened multiple times. So with all of that, I hope that any fans of Junji Ito are maybe people who are not familiar with this work yet had a lot of fun with this video and that this was very informative as well. I always aim to entertain and inform my audience. So I hope that that's exactly what I did here. If you are someone who's been around for a while and has been with my channel for a little bit, thank you so much for deciding to stop in today and watching this video and spending the time with me. If you're new to the channel, thank you for stopping in as well. And I hope that you'll consider hitting that subscribe button to support me and to get notified of all the awesome manga and comic related content that I put out every single week. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, and let me know down below what your favorite Junji Ito collections are, and which ones you're looking forward to purchasing if you have not already yet. And what do you guys think? With all these stories that I've mentioned, all this stuff that's not been translated officially yet by Viz, how many more hardcovers do you think that we're going to have from Junji Ito published by Viz? Is it going to be another five or so? What, what do you think? I'm just curious because there's a lot of stuff that hasn't been collected yet, which means there's still a lot more material that we can get in those beautiful hardcover editions, and I can't wait to add them to my shelf. So let me know what you're thinking about down below in the comments, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out.